Are you struggling with the CPA exam because your course failed to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, where the right teacher makes all the difference. With long-term construction contracts, on the CPA exam, the journal entries are important, important to know, because the account titles are unique. In this chapter known as long-term construction, the accounting for long-term construction contracts involves some unique account titles like construction in progress. And that's a current asset. And you might get points just for knowing that on the exam, that the account construction in progress is a current asset. And what's in it? Well, what's in it is all the construction costs to date, plus all the profit recognized to date. That's the construction in progress account. And it's a current asset. Progress billings is another unique account title, but that's a contra asset. Now, if construction in progress at the end of the year is greater than progress billings, then what you'll show on the balance sheet is a current asset for the excess of the construction in progress over the progress billings. If progress billings are greater than construction in progress, then what you'll show on the balance sheet at year end is the excess as a current liability. So here's a question that they could ask you on long-term construction. At the end of year one of a three-year contract, construction in progress is 65,000 and progress billings is 50,000. The year end balance sheet would show what? Well, if the T account for construction in progress shows 65,000, that would be on the debit side because that's a current asset. And progress billings, if the T account showed 50,000, that would be on the credit side because that's a contra asset. The year end balance sheet would show the two of these amounts netted. And since construction in progress is greater, what you'd show is a current asset of 15,000. So the answer is D. Since construction in progress is greater than progress billings, Therefore, the net amount of 15,000 is shown on the balance sheet as a current asset. So you wouldn't show any of the contra asset. You would just net the two out. And since the current asset is higher than the contra asset, you would show the net amount of 15,000 as a current asset. And you might be wondering, if this is a three-year construction contract, why are we showing the asset construction in progress as a current asset? and not a long-term asset? And that's a good question. The answer is because the operating cycle for this business is the length of time it takes to finish this contract. And remember what a current asset is. It's an asset that's going to be sold or converted into cash within a year or the length of the operating cycle, whichever is longer. And in this rare case, the operating cycle is longer than one year. Let's try it this way this time. At the end of year one of a three-year construction contract, construction in progress is 65,000 and progress billings is 70,000. The year-end balance sheet would show what? Well now, since progress billings is greater than construction in progress, your contra asset is actually greater than your current asset. Believe it or not, you're going to show this as a current liability on the balance sheet for $5,000. The answer is once again, D. So even though progress billings is a contra asset in the general ledger, when you get to the balance sheet, if it happens to be greater than construction in progress, progress billings is shown as a current liability. That means you build out more to the customer than your construction costs plus your profit. Whenever progress billings is greater than construction in progress, it means that you've billed out more to your customer than your construction costs plus your profit, and therefore you're gonna show this as a current liability. Whereas in the previous question, in the previous question, we showed construction in progress greater than progress billings, and that happens because the construction cost plus the profit recognized to date is greater than what we build out. 
and that shows up as a current asset on the balance sheet for 15000 So I told you the journal entries were really important here, so we're going to do a question, a nice little sim, on long-term construction under the percentage of completion method, heavily emphasizing the journal entries because that's what I think the exam is going to ask about especially with the new revenue recognition rules. The new revenue recognition rules say that you recognize revenue now using what's called the input methods for long-term construction. And basically that's the same as the percentage of completion method always was. So they may or may not ask you to do the percentage of completion calculation, but they will certainly expect that you will know journal entries and these new account titles that we just went over when it comes to long-term construction. Now these account titles are not new, but they're new for this chapter. They're new and unique to just long-term construction. So here's the facts in the sim. In year one, the Logan Company signs a contract to build a road for the state of North Carolina for two and a half million dollars. So that's the contract price. Two and a half million is what Logan Company is going to collect for building this road for North Carolina. But Logan Company is going to have to spend money to make two and a half million. They're not going to make two and a half million profit. It says during year one they're going to spend four hundred thousand, and they're going to expect that the job will require another million six to finish. So really, it looks like the Logan Company is anticipating spending a total of two million dollars in construction costs in order to make this two and a half million dollar contract. So the revenue is going to be two and a half million, but they expect the costs to be two million. So the best case scenario in year one is that they expect a $500,000 profit over the life of this contract. So we're going to have to do the journal entries for year one. And what the exam is going to do is take you into year two also. And the facts say that during year two, Logan spends an additional 700000 That's on top of the 400000 that they spent in year one. And now they believe that it's going to take another million one more to finish the job, which means the total estimate of cost has changed in year two, and it always will. By year two, it often gets a little confusing in these kind of questions. That's why it's very important not to go into year two until you finish year one and all the journal entries for year one but the exam they'll present the facts with regard to year two right on top of the facts in year one but you ignore the year two facts when you're doing all your work in year one and don't pick up your year two facts until you're done with year one so the required here says if the percentage of completion method is being applied what are the journal entries for logan corp in year one and then in year two so we're going to only focus on year one right now. So year one, Logan has incurred a cost of 400000 so far. They believe a million six more in costs will be necessary to earn that two and a half million. They're going to have to spend what they think is going to be two million over the life of the contract. And they're doing all this estimate in year one because they're not in year two yet. So stay away from year two while you're doing year one calculations and year one journal entries. So the expected total cost looks like $2 million all the way through year one. They expect the total cost of this contract to be $2 million. And because the contract price is $2.5 million, then they feel that the total profit will be $500,000. The difference between the contract price of $2.5 million and their estimate in year one of total cost, which is $2 million. They'll always give you some information on the exam about billings and cash collections. Because what a contractor will do is they'll regularly bill the customer during performance of the contract so that the contractor is not just laying out money and laying out more money, but they're constantly going to get some payments, some cash collections from the customer, and this will be all agreed to in advance. And on the CPA exam, they'll tell you that in year one, 50000 was billed to North Carolina and only 10000 of it was collected in year one. Now for our year one journal entries, the first three entries, pretty straightforward once you get used to these account titles, like construction in progress, we know is a current asset, so we'll debit that, and we'll credit cash for the 400,000 spent on construction costs in the first year. 
So debit construction in progress, credit cash for the amount they told us they spent on construction costs in the first year, which was 400000 spent in year one. Then they told us about billings and cash collections. Those are our next two journal entries. Entry number two, Logan Corp bills the state of North Carolina, debit accounts receivable, credit an account called Progress Billings. We mentioned that account. We said that's a contra asset, and as such, it has a normal credit balance. So debit accounts receivable, credit Progress Billings for 50000 That's the second journal entry. Then the third entry is just a collection of cash. Logan collected 10000 from the state during the year. So debit cash, credit accounts receivable, $10,000. So these three journal entries, very important to know. Big time points on the exam if you get a sim like this. You've got to know your journal entries in the construction area. And here's the first three entries in year one. The other thing I want you to know about this, these three journal entries is these would be the same journal entries even if we were using the completed contract method. So even though we're using percentage of completion now in this sim, even if we were using completed contract, these three entries would be exactly the same. And what do you notice about these three entries? They're balance sheet only, right? All three of these entries only have balance sheet accounts. There's no income statement accounts yet. And that's why I say that even if this was the completed contract method, you'd still be making these three entries. Now, here's where you're going to do some work to get this fourth entry. You've got to determine the income statement impact of year one. Why? Because we're using the percentage of completion method. And using that method, we're letting inputs determine how much profit we recognize in this first year. So how do we do it? We take the costs to date. These are our inputs. 400000 was spent out of a total expected cost of $2 million, Right? We expect our inputs to be $2 million. So far, we inputted 400000 under input methods. We say that we're 20% complete. 400000 over $2 million, or 4 over 20. We're 20% done in the first year with our inputs. Therefore, the profit recognized to date in the first year should be 20% of the total profit that we expect, which is 500000 over the life of the contract times 20% this year equals $100,000 of profit to be recognized in year one. Now that's a very important step, so I want to slow down here. Where did the 500,000 come from that we multiplied by 20%? Well, if you recall, the contract price was 2 million five and the total cost estimate was 2 million and there's the 500,000 in estimated total profit in year one. That's the difference in the facts between what they gave us for the contract price of two and a half million and the expected total cost in year one of two million, that's the 500,000. We took the 500,000 of estimated profit, multiplied it by the 20%, and got 100,000 profit to recognize in this first year. Where'd the 20% come from? Well, that came from the inputs. We inputted 400,000 out of a total expected input of two million. That indicates the job is 20% complete. The profit recognized to date is therefore $100,000 in year one. Now, how do we journalize that profit of $100,000? That brings us to our fourth journal entry, and this is the income statement journal entry. We debit construction expenses for $400,000. That's an income statement account, construction expenses. We debit construction in progress for $100,000. That's the profit that we just calculated. We debit construction in progress for that profit. And together that adds up to 500,000 and we'll credit revenue for that 500,000 and plug revenue for that 500,000. And notice that the construction in progress account is gonna hold both the cost to date of 400,000 plus the profit recognized to date of 100,000. The construction in progress account is going to have 500,000 in it by the end of the first year. Also note that the billings and cash collections that we did in the third journal entry don't have any impact on the profit recognized. Remember how we said we billed out 50,000 and we collected 10,000 in cash, but that didn't impact our profit because our profit was based on input methods. 
and that's what we inputted in costs, which was 400,000, divided by the 2 million total expected costs when we said the job at the end of year one, 20% complete. 20% complete with $500,000 profit, that's why we recognized 100,000 in profit in the first year, and we recognize profit by debiting construction in progress. Remember, construction in progress not only holds the costs, but also holds the profit. Remember your first journal entry was you debited construction in progress for the costs, the 400,000. So now we'll see all four journal entries on the same slide so that we can see that in the first entry, we debited construction in progress for 400,000. That was the construction costs for the first year. In the fourth entry, we debited construction in progress for 100,000. That's the profit. So together, the construction in progress T account will have 500,000 in it as a debit at the end of the first year. Also notice what we did with 400,000. 400,000 represents the construction costs. They got debited to construction in progress, a balance sheet account. But also 400,000, the same 400,000 in construction costs got debited to construction expense an income statement account. And that's because we want to have an income statement impact under the percentage of completion method. Even in the first year, we haven't finished, but we're still going to show revenue of 500,000 less construction expenses of 400,000 equals net profit of 100,000. Even though we haven't finished the project, we're still showing revenue and profit on the income statement. So we looked at year one, but the exam is going to also ask you about year two. And year two is considered a little more sophisticated than year one. So what do we have to know for year two? Hey, it's Darius. And if you want help with the long-term construction accounting, like the percentage of completion method, or any part of the FAR exam, go to cpaexamtutoring.com, home of the I-75 CPA Review Supplement, where the right teacher makes all the difference.